Hi, I'm Christian Turner and I'm a CG artist working in the automotive field. I've got around 13 years experience working for different post-production companies at different capacities. A couple of years back I presented my back catalogue to 3D London and have been invited back by Ioana to give a, another presentation, but this time I wanted to focus a little more on the theory of what's important to us when image making. In 2018, my partner Rika and I started Wooden Gun as a boutique post-production studio offering a bespoke service. She's a photographer turned retoucher and I'm a CG artist who has spent most of his career being directed by photographers. Photographic principles and uh, basis in reality are integral to everything we do. I'd like to show you some examples of uh, images where we've pushed really hard to retain this physical integrity uh, in our work. Sometimes we push a little too hard, but you'll see. Working closely with photographers and other creators is really important to us. The early shared development of a project is always exciting. Bouncing ideas, references and building a treatment is one of the most rewarding parts of a project. The energy you build during these sessions can hold you over during the classically laboured end to a project prior to release. With each project we have done with Tilo Sikaneda, we have pushed things technically and visually further. Starting fairly straightforward with the Volvo XC40, we got to know each other and how to operate together. When he said he was shooting in LA and planning on capturing backplates and domes on lower ground, we saw it as an opportunity not to be missed. The location has been used so many times before, so we really needed to stand out. So we chose a bright yellow Lamborghini to stand out. In my personal work, I've been playing with mimicking tracking shots, where the camera follows the movement of the subject but stays in the same position, as opposed to being on a dolly or rigged to the car. For me, this gives a more voyeuristic look to the shot and makes the viewer feel like they're firmly at the location. This is easier to do in a full CGI environment, as everything has the correct scale and distance, so parallax is accurately. When using a single frame, some cheating needs to be done. In this case, cameras were matched and rough geometry modelled to project the backplate onto. An animated camera then renders the scene with motion blur. This also raised some issues for Rika in post as the photographic backplate needed to be retouched and extended to allow for the blur. Then projected, rendered with motion blur, have the car composited, integrated and the whole image graded. This is a lot of work to make an image look as if it was taken by someone who by chance was there when the car drove past. I think it's this sort of detail that really makes the difference and the question of is it CGI becomes redundant. Continuing with Tilo, he really wanted to do a project with the McLaren 720S. This is a car we'd already used, uh, so the treatment had to be different. Being slightly obsessive about perspective, I noticed that within the bank of images Tilo had shot at night on a German bridge, many of the roads lined up perpendicularly to one another. From this, the double exposure treatment was born. The car needed to move and the background motion blur was going to be problematic with the number of layers of verticals overlaying a distant city lights. There are a few options available. You can, and most would, um, blur the whole thing in virtual rig or path blur. You can get a better effect masking a few layers and blurring at different speeds to fake the parallax, but we went one step further. Using the same principle adopted in the Lamborghini shots, I built the bridges roughly, all the layers of the bridge were masked, and the background city cleaned and extended. With all the images projected onto the geometry, I could animate the camera and render a new backplate with motion blur. All of the elements of the bridge structure move at the correct speed in relation to the camera. Can you see it? Do we take it too far? Does it matter? It mattered enough for us to do it, so maybe that's all that matters. Tilo also went above and beyond by shooting fire from a gas torch uh, for the exhaust and the close-up rear shot. It's light and mainly transparent, but like with the motion blur, 100% worth it to us. By now you can see the lengths we go to in order to create physically plausible still images. There's a number of ways V-Ray has helped us with this. 
when working on another portfolio project with Jack Schroeder, we were doing a similar setup. The location had no vehicle access, so it was an ideal scenario where CGI can be utilised. Jack shot HDRIs and also some very helpful short videos where he went around measuring things like floor tiles, steps and railings. When it came to rebuilding the shots in Maya to render accurate reflections, I could do it all to scale. I also had a camera metadata, so I could look up the aperture shape and a number of other characteristics. When it came to a shot with the car obscured in the foreground, I could render with a plausibly accurate depth of field. Using ray tracing in this way, the reflection of the model retains more clarity than the window geometry itself, something that happens in reality, but it's very difficult to achieve with a post-production depth blur. Other types of blur and distortion can play a big part in the feel of an image. Unless you're in a vacuum, the atmosphere bends light like glass and water based on the index of refraction. This IOR changes fluidly depending on things like humidity, what gaseous components are present, and temperature. This is how the mirage phenomena comes about via heat distortion. One thing that generates a lot of heat is an internal combustion engine. When researching for the racing collaboration I conceived with Dimitri from Mondelec Studios, this heat distortion played a big part. It's another visual cue that leads the viewer to engage in a synesthetic experience. To be able to smell the fumes, hear the engine and feel the heat given off all through seeing a picture. By layering refractive planes, I was able to match the distortion in my references. This image contains tracked motion blur, depth of field, heat distortion, environment volume, bloom and glare, and is graded to match a specific film. Of course, all this process creates a particular look that is not relevant to the majority of product shots. The motivation to keep things accurate does remain with cameras, framing and lighting. Even when moving around huge yellow light panels, like in the images we made for the launch of the Lotus Electra. These are not new tools, but there are a few I'd like to mention that I'm excited about as they can make my life easier in the future. Being around as long as I have, you get to see and experience a lot of different tools. VRED or VRED, usually used on power walls or VR to display design changes during the development of a vehicle, is a program I've used live projects to create high resolution print imagery. It had a great environment though, with a lot more functionality than that of Mental Ray's RBL or V-Ray's Dome Light, as it could be moved and keyframed. It's a step between the infinite point and my projecting onto geometry method, making it very versatile. I'm happy to hear a similar HDR Dome Light has been released in the latest version of V-Ray. Another interesting new development is having a procedural cloud model. I tested view and ozone some years ago with mixed but slow results, but uh, the potential of being able to build skies is very powerful. In testing, it's very much in its infancy, but it has the potential of reducing our reliance on HDRIs in many cases. Over the last few versions of V-Ray, the frame buffer has become a more usable grading tool. With live interaction sessions, we can push the look of an image at a very early stage and get a solid idea of direction and buy-in from client without touching Photoshop. On top of these, there are new technical tools to help with full CGI productions. Chaos Scatter, V-Ray, Enmesh, everything coming into Phoenix, there's a huge amount to look forward to. Looking at the work we've done, there's been a lot of progress, both technically and creatively, adapting tools towards our goals of creating not just convincing, but creatively inspiring CGI imagery. There's countless areas still to explore and hopefully another time I'll be able to show you what we have in mind. Thank you very much.